Mm, mm, oh. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. As you can see, things are really starting to pile up over here. And last Wednesday, I gave you a sneak peek at this new model from Moon Man. It's the S5. It was fortuitous that the pen arrived while I was in the middle of filming my review of the newest Pen BBS 323, the Peacock. I was literally typing. The Pen BBS 323 is unique among pen shapes and has few, if any, rivals." Unquote. When I received a notice that this pen was in my mailbox. I did an unboxing video right away and was surprised and pleased by what I found. The 323 does in fact have a rival. How does this new, clear eyedropper pen for Moon Man stack up against the venerable Pen BBS 323? And indeed, how does it compare with its Moon Man predecessors in the M2, the C1, and the C2? Well, you guessed it, inquiring minds want to know, and they'll find out right now. <laughs> So this package arrived in a good amount of time. Uh, this was purchased from Easy Buy on Etsy. And uh, Sally is generally pretty good with uh, shipping. It's been in Canada for about two weeks. So it got delivered to Canada from Etsy in a short order. And then it was the Canadians that uh, balled things up. What's garbage? Well, what do you expect? They're Canadian. So, you can't always blame the Chinese post. Let's open this puppy up and see what it is. It's a ball of bubble pack. And I don't generally like to get the boxes, pay the extra for the boxes for this. But this Moon Man box looked so interesting. I thought I would uh, pay the little bit of extra and see what the box looked like. And it's uh, wrapped in cellophane and it is metal. I was surprised. It's a little tin box. So even when I've taken the contents out, I can certainly use a little tin box for all my little extra goodies. I'm gonna get my stuff. And there we go, Moon Man, the feel, feel the temperature of writing. It is a Moon Man S5. This uh, I, attracted me because it's uh, another new model from Moon Man. That's very nice. Little tin box. And here we have a little use and care guide, an eyedropper and two spare nibs and the pen in cellophane let's see what these nibs are first so this i'm looking through the camera right now so i can't really decipher that logo i'll get my loop out and take a look at it but that is what looks like a very fine stub and this one Looks like exactly the same stub. Nope, I'm wrong. This one is oblique, and this is a regular stub. Very interesting. We'll have to give those a try. And, and clear acrylic, oh, with a jewel on it. I didn't notice that before. Which lines up the nib, very nice. And it posts. Holy crap. Holy crap. Okay. There's a, a little lesson for you people at Pen BBS that you can actually take this shape, which looks like Moon Man has done a little number on your shape with that little fishtail. You see the 323? I love the 323 and how it feels in your hand. So I'm going to do some A-B comparing with that. And I was attracted to the fact that this didn't have your typical Moon Man metal concave section. This is acrylic. This was the only choice. I'm not that fond of green, but there are some blues in there and some blacks, 
which break it up and a number five nib uh, this is a fine i believe well we'll have to clean this guy out see whether that lines up oh does it always line up yes it does so far i'm very impressed the acrylic is very crystal clear just like the moon man m2 which originally attracted me to these clear acrylics look at the amount of solid acrylic on the bottom here boy when you fill this up with some ink it's going to look gorgeous we'll have to see how it writes so i held off inking this pen until i could do it on camera I run some soapy water through all three nibs the feed and collar assemblies and rinse them thoroughly so we can now ink the pen for the first time together but first let's go over the parts and features of this pen after i've inked the pen for you i will show you some size comparisons and show you some measurements then i'll write with the pen for a while and then come back with a writing sample i'm really pleased with this presentation box it's a sturdy tin box that can be used for many purposes if you stop using it to store your pen of course it's also a terrific gift presentation christmas is only 15 weekends away folks Holy crap. order now and receive it for new year's so the top comes off we have the pen two extra nibs an eyedropper and this instruction booklet but it's excellent to have these pictographic instructions kudos for that we'll get to these nibs shortly but let's take a look at the pen i was immediately struck by the shape similarity with the pen bbs 323 but it is also clear that this pen is a refinement uh, first of the m2 and the c1 but also the c2 i never purchased the c2 as it really didn't push any of my buttons and i feel the pen bbs 491 is a better option with a lot more finish choices but at first glance this cap here looks very similar to the c2's cap the cap is bullet or torpedo shaped depending on your choices of ordnance uh, with a flat top and a really nice chunky absolutely crystal clear acrylic right here this is flawlessly clear and beautiful and the entire pen's acrylic is polished to a very high luster one might think that the pointed conical finials of the 323 from pen bbs are missing on this pen but you'd be wrong then wouldn't you well they were wrong then weren't they look closely and you can see there's that conic shape right in there milled into the acrylic and it's on the underside of that chunk of acrylic at the top as well there's also an extra step inside the cap here uh, that's not uh, a cap seal step because it doesn't meet up with the section i can only assume that it's there because it has a because they needed a two-step milling process a seal isn't actually required as the threads here on the section should seal the nib this is an eyedropper and they are notorious for burping and spitting into the cap and being so clear you can see all that pen spit in living color through the glass from the largest point of the cap which is about here the pen tapers all the way down to the flare in the tail of the barrel without interruption other than the gold band at the top of the barrel with a single plastic jewel that marks the orientation of the nib actually i believe this jewel is the same clear acrylic that you find on the rest of the pen the cap comes off with one two three full turns which might have something to do with that cap seal as well with the cap off we see the section of course you can see the section with the cap on too we already saw it through the glass and it's a cracked ice style acrylic with blue green black and some very interesting purple in there as well and it's a tapering concave shape and we see the number five size gold colored steel nib that has the moon man logo some nice filigree scroll work moon man super quality and a dot f which i assume means fine and there is the plastic feed the gold band at the top of the barrel has moon man laser etched in the back and that and the nib are the only designations 
of brand on here and there's no indication of model number anywhere on the pen. The nib unscrews from the section and you can replace it for one of the other two nibs. Getting these nibs out of the box takes a little bit of effort. And this is where my guitar fingernails come in really handy. So if you ever want to grow some guitar fingernails, just know that all of the ridicule and derision you'll get from being a guy with fingernails is totally worth it at moments like this. When I first looked at these two nibs, I thought one was an oblique uh, italic and one was a regular uh, italic stub. Now that I look at them closer, you can see that they're both obliques. I put my calipers on these and uh, they're both exactly the same size. So why anyone would need two of these in this set is beyond me, other than maybe they wear out. I wear out one and I use the spare. I don't know. There's no markings other than this lotus flower kind of design on the nib, and I haven't got a clue what that is. How about you out there? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? 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 Let's try swapping one in. And, and they said they weren't Moon Man branded, but now I look on the side, it says Moon Man. So maybe the nib isn't Moon Man, but they put it into a Moon Man collar. That might make some sense. The new nib screws right in, easy as paste. Hey, a piece of pie. Cake, piece of cake. <laughs> now for the nicest surprise so far with this pen. The cap posts, and it posts deeply and securely. Very nice. Let's see how this pen feels in the hand. It's really very nicely balanced, but that step, even though you feel it, it is substantial. It isn't as annoying or sharp edged as the Metropolitan is. And this cap weighs next to nothing. So there's no back weighting of this pen posted at all. You'd really have something if you had a standard number six Moonman nib in this. And that little jewel right there, even though I'm not one for bling on my pens at all, um, that actually is very attractive and it guides the nib. When you screw down that nib or the section, it always lines up with that uh, little jewel. Of course, the section unscrews from the barrel, which gives you access to the ink chamber. The end of the section has a silicone seal which will get some silicone grease right now so we're gonna put a little dabble do ya right here those people that are not baby boomers will not get that reference but i'll probably put a cutaway in here about a little dabble do ya and we're ready for some ink what ink should i use we have a number of choices of colors to match with this pen. Greens, blues, purples, blacks. And I've done a few blue greens and greens lately, so I'm going to go with a blue purple instead. I'm going to match that purple right there. My friend and fellow YouTube pen reviewer, Alan Light of What I Ink, sent me a present the other day. Some sample inks, and this is one of them. And also this really cool little toy. This is from a company I'd never heard of before called Fan Moo. It was available on Etsy for a while. This is a spring syringe, and we're going to use that today to fill up this pen. Alan was nice enough to snag one and send it to me. Thanks, Alan. One of the ink samples he sent me uh, was this Diamine Skull and Roses. I'm going to try the stub first, I think, since I'm less interested in a number five Moon Man fine. And we're going to use the Fanmu spring syringe instead of the supplied eyedropper. Just a word or two of caution here for those of you who may be new to eyedroppering a pen. First, don't fill the pen all the way to the top. Leave a little bit of room up here for that section to go in. Otherwise, Archimedes will have his Eureka revenge on you due to the principle of displacement if you do. Second, I know it sounds silly with this kind of ink capacity, but don't let the ink level fall below two-thirds or so. 
another bit of physics will come into play. This is the principle of what we ink scientists call the big spit. And this leads me to a new segment called Sciencey Stuff with Doug. Welcome to Sciencey Stuff with Doug. Friends, do you have inky fingers? Is your eyedropper pen shooting streams of ink at you or into the cap of your pen like some deranged squid? Are you suffering from what we pseudoscientists call the big spit? This is caused by something called thermal expansion of gases, combined with something else equally as technically intimidating called hydraulics, or what I call the weirdness of water. First principles. Air expands when heated and condenses when cooled. You know this when your ice cold beer glass sweats in the heat or when your eyedropper pen squirts ink at you. More on that in a moment. Next principles. Water will not compress. I told you water is weird. Most things compress when they are cold. Water expands when it freezes. You see this when your case of beer cans explode because you left it in the trunk at the Christmas party. So, if water won't compress and air expands, what will happen to the ink made of 99% water when the air inside your half-full eyedropper pen heats from your hand? A. It will freeze. B. It will shoot out through the nib. C. It will change color. And D. Why am I listening to this idiot? And the correct answer is yes, B. Congratulations. Woohoo! I'm a college man! I won't need my high school diploma anymore. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. I am too smart. S-M-R-T. I mean S-M-A-R-R-T. What do we have for them, Johnny? Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? The rest of you, eh, thanks for playing. Be sure to tune in next time when we explore such sleep-inducing topics as Archimedes' Law of Displacement or What Was That Old Greek Doing in the Bathtub? And Newton's First Law of Motion or Why Can't I Get My Brother-in-Law Off the Couch? All of that is to illustrate that a lot of air inside your eyedropper pen's ink chamber will run the risk of that air heating, usually with the heat of your hand. And the heated air will expand and push the ink out the nib, causing burping and spitting. So we're going to fill this just to under the section and allow that section to close into that space that I've left and not allow ink to be displaced because of an ancient Greek. Just think, if Archimedes wasn't so fastidious about cleanliness, we wouldn't have this problem. Okay, so we have our silicone grease section. We have our cool gadget syringe. And we have some ink. This is Diamine Skull and Roses. And we're going to open this up. And we're going to suck up some ink. Again, we're only going to go to underneath the section. So I'm going to leave a little bit there. There we go. Now that we have the pen full, but the nib and feed and section are empty of ink. With an eyedropper, you can't just push ink up through the feed like you can with a converter or a piston filler. However, you can speed things up by dipping the nib a little bit before you put the ink away. Yeah, right. It's very wet. And we're getting some interesting line variation, of course, because that's a stub. But it's oblique. So when you go you get a thin line on the upstroke to the right, and on the downstroke to the left, you get a thicker line. And here we are with the Moonman S5. And we'll see it right next to a pen BBS 323. You notice they're, they're almost identical in terms of length, if not identical. And here's a Moonman M2. 
and a Moonman T1, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here are the pens posted. And you'll see that uh, the T1 and the 323 both have number six size nibs, where the rest of them have number five size. If you just kind of visualize that Moonman number six on that S5, you can see what I mean. A little bit larger section, that would be one hell of a pen. And now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with that writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Moon Man. S5 and it has a fine steel nib. I must say the stub is going to be nicer but let's uh, let's do this first. This is the ink and the ink is diamine. Skull and roses. Let's check the wetness here. It's very dry and it's uh, a bit scratchy as well. Uh, I wouldn't say it's scratchy, it's got feedback, let's put it that way. And seems to have some, some flow issues. And here is the swatch for the diamine skull and roses. I don't know whether you can see this or not. Let's move it around in the light. There's a lot of red magenta sheen in that color. I really like it. And here is right next to Robert Oster Muddy Crown and Noodler's North African Violet. And with line variation, it's very stiff. I'm pushing this a little bit because I want it to open up a little bit more, but I seem to be digging into the paper. Yeah, this nib isn't very good. So I'm going to pull it. So now this is a 1.0, as far as I can tell, millimeter oblique stub. And it's very smooth with just a little bit of feedback. Let's check the wetness now. Yeah, it's a lot better, a lot wetter. And as to line variation, well, with the line variation, of course, that's no pressure at all. And already I'm getting some line variation like that. Which is very nice and if you push it you get some more but it's much nicer to get the variation out of the stub and for our writing sample And some quick writing. You see it's having no difficulty keeping up at all. So really I would recommend if you get a choice to get one of these little stubs uh, rather than the fine nib that came with the pen because the fine nib was disappointing but this is a gas so what do i like and what do i not like so much about this fountain pen well there's a lot to like about this fountain pen it shows me that moon man is as capable of innovation and design development 
as they are adept at copying. The evolution of the Moon Man eyedropper is really fascinating to watch. From the Moon Man Wankai to the M2, here's the M2, to the C1, which for some reason I can't find. It's gone missing from my inventory. My pen! My pen! My pen! To the C2, which I didn't get one of, and now the S5. I do not get their model numbering system at all, though. This pen shows that Moon Man is actually listening. The M2 is great, but it didn't post that well, and it rolled off your desk. So they put a flat spot on the C1, but it wouldn't post. So they put a roll stop on the S5 and made it post beautifully. The pen looks great, it feels great, and as we saw, it writes great. The oblique stubs are really cool. I don't need two of them, but cool nonetheless. This acrylic is amazingly clear and beautiful. So what are my picky quibbles? Well, I think the nib needs to be a number six sized nib. And I think there should be, and probably will be, more variety in the color of the section. You know, it's more selection. I think this is going to be a very popular pen, probably as popular as the M2. And to be really picky and voice the concern of many out there for which this pen will be a non-starter, what about a clip? Get right on those issues, will you, Moon Man? The S6 might be out for the lucrative gift-giving season. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.